What is going on, guys and gals? Brooklyn Bound, the Raid Scientist here, and today, the Raid Challenges are out, and Master Crota Zen being available. That means we have the opportunity to obtain Adept Raid Weapons through completing the Master Weekly Challenge, and double loot drops if doing the Weekly Challenge on Normal Mode. The Adept Weapons from completing Master Challenges are not fixed in Crota Zen like they were in other Master Raids, meaning that you're going to get a random Adept Raid Weapon after beating the challenge, instead of everyone getting the exact same one. You can then repeat it on other characters and get different weapons that seem to be duplicate protected. Remember that the weekly challenges rotate each encounter weekly and contain a specific mechanic in addition to completing the encounters normally to obtain those additional rewards. This week, the challenge is done on the third encounter, Ear Ute the Death Singer, and is called Equal Vessels. I'm only going to explain the challenge as if you already know how to do this encounter normally. If you need a full guide on the Ear Ute encounter, check out my full Crota Zen Guide link down in the description. And if you're doing this on Master, remember that the power level is 1840, with the maximum effectiveness being 1820. To do the Equal Vessels challenge, two things need to remain true throughout the entire encounter. First, every player needs to hold the chalice at least once before anyone can hold it a second time. And continuing on, everyone needs to have held it twice before they can hold it a third time, and so on. The second piece that must remain true is the order of which the chalice is handled among your team has to be the same each time as well, otherwise the challenge will fail. So. Set in stone a specific order, 1 through 6, for holding the chalice, and keep that order throughout. Once the 6th player in the rotation has touched the chalice, you can then go back to player 1. Note that the challenge has nothing to do with becoming enlightened, you literally only need to touch the chalice for it to count. It also has nothing to do with the DPS phase on your Ute, either, so if you think all 6 players have to touch it before the DPS phase starts, that's not true. Some strategies for doing this, especially on Master Difficulty, is to enlighten as many players as possible on the first phase, the most being five people. Have the sixth player deposit the chalice in the node before the damage starts. The first three players will lose their enlightened by going to get the witches, but then you'll still have two players that remain enlightened. You can have these two players, instead of expunging during DPS, keep their enlightened, which means when you start the chalice rotation again, you only need two more players to get enlightened on the second phase, which is much quicker. Remember that there are four witches on the second phase instead of three. So those two players who kept their enlightened can get two, and players one and two in the rotation can then get enlightened and get the other two. Then, the third person in the order who picks it up can just deposit it again in the node. You really should plan on at most doing this boss in two damage phases, as in the third round, getting five witches can get pretty messy, especially on Master. Also on Master, it is Arc Surge, so Thunderlord, Legend of Acrius, and even Grand Overture with Divinity, and even a Tether or Tractor Cannon for the 30% debuff is best for damage. Don't forget the Surge's mods on your boots to match the element weapon you're using. A couple final notes on this encounter. If you want, you can have a Warlock with Heat Rises or Blink, jump up as shown and grab the Chalice of Light from below the floor, and do the entire first rotation safely. Honestly, this just makes it take longer, but if you want to do this, go for it. Secondly, at the time I'm making this video, Warlocks can also still blink through the barricade walls to get to the Witches without losing your Enlightened. You have to have Enlightened for this to work though, so it doesn't hurt to have one Warlock on blink just in case someone dies or can't get their Witch for some reason. Finally, on Master Difficulty, the adds and Barrier Knights in the Crystal Room in the middle get pretty overwhelming. You can stick to the sides of the rooms instead, or just go up top where the back three witches' rooms are and do your swaps up there. You can even DPS from up there if you want, as long as you don't need to be close for whatever weapons you're using. Make sure you at least open up the middle room first by killing the Shriekers, though. Either way, in summary, Rotate the chalice in the same order every time, starting with player 1 through 6, and then repeat in the same order. Dunking the chalice in the node does not reset the pattern, so if for some reason player 3 is the one who ends up dunking it in the node to preserve it, then player 4 is the next one who needs to take it out. The rotation does not reset after damage phase. Best of luck in getting this done, Guardians, and thanks for watching.
Until next time.